Penny. And that's moving over on the Nasdaq, helping to push Watch that Watch Bloomberg Television there. for instant alerts and analysis throughout earnings season. Do you know which president delivered the shortest inaugural address or which vice president showed up drunk at his? These pieces of inauguration trivia and much more are included in the latest edition of author Jim Bendat's book, Democracy's Big Day, the Inauguration of Our President, 1789 to 2009. He joins me now here in the studio to talk about the history of America's inaugurals. Jim, thank you for the time. Appreciate you joining us. And let me ask you, have, have we always done it this way with the, the outdoor speech, the long parade down Pennsylvania Avenue? It's been an evolution over the years. When George Washington was sworn in in 1789, there was no official inaugural ball. There was no official inaugural parade. Those things came in later in 1809 with James Madison and his party-giving wife, Dolly Madison. And the other traditions also have evolved over the years. And it is an interesting, a uniquely American tradition as well. A lot of other countries don't do it this way. That's very true. We have our own way of doing it. Our election's always in November. The election, the inauguration's always on January 20th. It used to be on March the 4th. Other countries may have it on any given day of the year if they even have one at all. Some countries decide their leaders through military juntas or coups. We have our own unique way of doing it. And you have a very unique book here talking about, again, some of the memorable moments from inaugurations of the past, some of the unique traditions here. Are there certain traditions that maybe Americans don't know that much about, things that stand out to you? Well, there's the early morning hours when the old and the new president get together at the White House. About an hour or so before the ceremony begins, Barack and Michelle Obama will go to the White House. They'll be met right there on the White House steps by George and Laura Bush. They'll pose for photos and they'll go inside for about 20 minutes. They'll schmooze, they'll drink some coffee. And then after that will be the procession to the Capitol where the old and the new president are in one car, the old and the new vice president in another car, the old and the new first lady in a third car and so on. Uh, that's, a, that's a tradition that began in 1837. Uh, you mentioned in your book that even that is choreographed very carefully. The, uh, which president sits on which side of the car? By tradition, the outgoing president sits on the right side of the car as the car is facing forward. Yeah, interesting. Um, let me ask you just about the speech itself. There have been some very memorable ones, maybe some that weren't so memorable. Uh, is there an inauguration speech that stands out to you? I would say that most inaugural addresses have not been memorable. They've been eminently forgettable. But I'd say that the best inaugural addresses in history were delivered by Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin D. Roosevelt, and John F. Kennedy. And you and I were talking earlier, there have been instances in which the, the oath, the actual official act of swearing in the president had been sort of butchered, right? It didn't, wasn't handled exactly right. What happened with Herbert Hoover's? Herbert Hoover was sworn in by Chief Justice William Howard Taft who 20 years earlier was our president. He's the only man ever to be both president and chief justice. And in 1929, when Taft administered the oath to Herbert Hoover, there was a little girl named Helen Terwilliger who was sitting in her uh, classroom in New York State. She had memorized the inaugural oath, and when she heard Taft recite it, she was certain that he had made a mistake. And she wrote to the Chief Justice to tell him so. She heard him say, preserve, maintain, and defend, rather than the correct words of preserve, protect, and defend. And amazingly, the Chief Justice wrote her back. And, they ha and the media got hold of this correspondence and the agencies that in those days put together sound newsreels, they compared their films, compared their sound, and to make a long story short, the little girl was right. Interesting, interesting. Uh, now let me ask you as well just about uh, other historical uh, sides of this. We have uh, this mentioned, uh, that I mentioned at the top, a vice president who showed up drunk at his inauguration. Tell us more about this. Well, that was Andrew Johnson in 1865, and it wasn't because he was celebrating. He was Lincoln's second vice president, and he wasn't feeling too well on his inauguration day. And some people suggested to him, why don't you drink some whiskey to take care of your ailment? And so he did. Now, back then, the vice president used to actually give an inaugural address of his own. And when Andrew Johnson got up there to speak, he was drunk. He was rambling incoherently. Nobody could understand a word that he was saying. It was considered to be a very embarrassing situation. Yeah, I bet. Uh, difficult situation for sure. Um, what about uh, what's coming up on, on Tuesday? First of all, the weather. It's going to be cold here in Washington. And again, you have a reference in your book that there was one American president who, as a result of the cold weather on his inaugural day, later died from it. That's true. 1841, William Henry Harrison, 
He was our oldest president at that time, 68 years old. He really didn't dress for the occasion, didn't dress warmly enough. He spoke for more than two hours. Normally, an inaugural address is only about 15 minutes, but he spoke for more than two hours. He attended all three inaugural balls that night, which was a record number at that time. He caught pneumonia, and he died after just one month in office. Uh, the inaugural balls, were there going to be uh, a lot of them here in Washington, events all over town. When did that part of the uh, inaugural, when did that become part of the tradition? Well, 1809 was the first official inaugural ball. Mm -hmm. uh, Dolly Madison was the big party giver in those days, and that was the first one. And it's evolved over the years. There was actually a period of time in the first half of the 20th century, many years, when there was no inaugural ball at all. But it's really picked up a lot since the 1950s, and the record number is 14 inaugural balls, Bill Clinton in 1997. He made it to all of them, right? The president and the first lady go to all the official inaugural balls. Jim Bendett, thank you for the time. Appreciate you joining us.